Hi guys and welcome. You're joining me today to see how I make a reversible table runner. Now the two fabrics I've used has been velvet and satin. So I've got a gold velvet and a cream satin and this is not a, a runner that I will took in the washing machine. It'll go to the dry cleaners. But if you're doing one that you want to just be able to chuck in your washing machine, then take into account the fabric that you're going to use so that they are similar fabrics that they can go in the washer and come out okay. You need to decide what size you want your table runner because it's entirely up to you. Now, my size, I did it, uh, I cut it at 18 inch wide by the length of my table was 63 inch, but then I allowed 12 inch overhang on both sides. So I added 24 inch onto the 63 inch and then I added seam allowance. And my seam allowance was, um, I think it worked out about just over a centimetre, but again, you can do whatever seam allowance you want, but take that into account. You can do either a straight hem on it at the end, or you can come down to a point. I decided to come down to a point and I have put a crystal embellishment at the point. So you can put a tassel on. If you're doing a straight one, you can put two tassels on the edge. Again, it's personal preference how you want to do it. So let's get started. So what I need to do, I need to get the ends. So I'm going to have a pointed M. So that is just salvage that. So I'm not going to take that into account when it comes to join the point. Even though that is going to be seam allowance, so I need to take it to that. Right, so let me get my pencil. Right, so that's ten there. And then that, I'll just get that so that it's it should be. Yep. Down to this corner. Right, so let me just get my scissors. I'm going to cut that at this point. And then when that's opened up, you've got your point. So I'm going to do the exact same on the other side. This is the other fabric that I've got, guys, and this is... A velvet come up ten inch. So when I'm doing this, when I'm cutting the point, you're marking up the open end and taking it down to the folded over corner. I'm going to start now then by opening it up. So it's right sides together at this point. So I'm just going to start now then by putting the ends together and clipping these together. just not matching up at this end here so I'm just going to cut that so that it's level with the satin now what you can do at this point guys I've only got a black one because these are what I cut off the bottom of a dress but if you wanted to put a tassel at the bottom of your point what you do here is put it on the inside 
and stitch it on there or you could simply stitch it on when it's turned the right way so you've got like a tassel on the end or some type of dangly bit that's what you could do at this point right so what i've just found when i've come back to machine i, I got this i took it off a satin dress maybe three years ago and i've had this on go up basically where my cotton rod is there it's been on there and i've just spotted it so i'm going to put these in the corners when I come to sewing that bit. Now I'm going to be leaving about, let's have a look, eight inch for turning it. And we're not going to have to neaten these at all because everything's going to be on the inside. Right, so let me just work out what the salvage needs to be. Needs to be the width of that. And then let me just get my magnet, put that to where the needle is, and then I'm going to set that. That's my template for the width. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go all the way around, keeping that seam allowance to that magnet, inserting this on the corner, and then leaving an opening so I can turn it. so it's holding that in place. So that's the opening that I've left to turn it. Right, I'm going to start off first of all, guys, by cutting this extra off. turned the right way i've used the end of a spoon so it's nothing sharp to poke the corners out and the center bit there that's got the crystal on in fact let me just see if i can get that a little bit further out right so what i'm going to do now then guys i'm going to be going round and i'm going to be pressing in fact i'm going to do it this way i'm going to be pressing this flat all the way around So you can see there guys that that's just been pressed flat 
So I'm going to go all the way around doing that, but I'm going to do it off camera just to save time. Now it's all pressed, but what I did go and do, and I've done it off camera, I've took it back under the machine, I simply pulled it through and working it like this and stitched. So when I've done that, I'll show you, I've pulled it through like that and then I've gone under the machine and sewn off the amount that was open in there. So I haven't got as far to sew. Now there's a couple of, well, there's a few options actually that you can put this together. You can either go around and put a tiny hem all the way around it. You can glue it with fabric glue, but what I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, what it's like an invisible stitch. So I'm gonna come inside and put the needle underneath that fold. And then I'm gonna start by just interweaving between the satin and then the velvet. And you just need to make sure with this that you're not going through to the front. Right, so that is all stitched up. So you can see from that guys that it is a pretty easy project to do isn't it and the fact of having it reversible you've got two different choices of fabric so if you fancy a change you just flip it over. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, take care for now and I'll see you soon, bye for now.